Hello, fabulous friends and fans. Welcome to this episode of Synchronicity. I am your host, Nadia Shaw, and this is your moment of synchronicity. I'm truly feeling so much gratitude right now. I have the great privilege of being at this fabulous conference called Enestrome. And it is an astrology conference taking place in Mexico City. And I'm here with some of the most brilliant astrologers in the Latin world. And this is my very first interview here with, with Martha, Martha Goenaga. And Martha Goenaga is a classical uh, pianist, is a musician, a very accomplished musician, also has trained with uh, Robert Zoller, the legend Robert Zoller, and um, really has a specialty in understanding natal charts and has a very fabulous energy as well. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Nadia. I'm very, I'm very honored to be the very first one. You're the very first one, and as regular friends and fans know that um, Mexico has just blessed my life in so many ways, the spirituality, the land, and certainly my practice as an astrologer. And so it is so great to give a little back, to say, wow, the astrology community here is amazing, is strong, and I think you're a great representative of that. So tell me, how did you get started in astrology? Well, it happened with, when my father died that I couldn't find like the answers I was looking for. I had my piano, I've been married for 40 years, so I had a wonderful life and still I couldn't understand a lot of things. Then by synchronicity, uh, an astrology book came to my hands. I, I met Luis Lesur, which was the greatest astrologer Mexico has had, I'm sure. And I started uh, studying with him. At first I thought it was gonna be like a hobby but then it, it got hold of me, and then I was captured by it, like you are, like we all are here. And so you've studied with uh, Robert Zoller, who's yes. a legend in our field, certainly. So what was that like? What did you gain? What was the benefit to you to actually study with someone that you respect, like sort of one-on-one? -on -one? Because a lot of astrologers, we, we kind of do our own thing. It's, yes. it's not uncommon. But for you, you actually had this privilege of having a mentor. So what was that experience like for you? Well, he was not really my mentor because it was always uh, through the Internet, and he was never here. He came for some seminars, some of which I organized. But he, he read my chart. And that was what he really was so amazing, you know, that it was immediately drawn to medieval astrology. And then I started studying with him and I made the whole course. And we had a lot of contact then, you know. And medieval astrology is just amazing. There are many kinds of astrology that are amazing. But this is one of my favorites. And so you recently wrote as part of an anthology and your contribution had to do with um, medieval astrology as well. So explain that a little bit for those of people out there who are new to astrology. How do you define medieval astrology and why do you like it? I like medieval astrology because it's like the contrast uh, from all this psychological astrology we do now. And we speculate a lot. And medieval astrology was objective. It was fatalistic sometimes. But you know, it's concrete. It, it uses your mind. It, it's not so much your imagination. You can get lost in your imagination. It takes you back to the roots, to the very fundaments of astrology. Medieval astrology is a lot more based in the mathematical part of it, in the scientific part of it, as opposed to, I, I know exactly what you're saying, because I think of astrology now as a, an act of divination. And we see that especially in psychological astrology, that you have to sort of um, make that poetic leap, right? Um, however, with medieval astrology, there are a few more strict techniques, although they still did have an element of inspiration. Still, they had some very strict formulas as well, right? They did, because the church wouldn't let them do anything else. The church wouldn't admit any influence over the soul, because you couldn't say, I do this because it's my nature. You, would, you didn't have to justify yourself like that. So it was only, uh, only the body and the story of your body uh, while it's here on earth. So that's why it's so objective. They didn't have these uh, wonderful tools we have today. So they had to work with the basics, like, like with a natal chart, they did wonderful things. And so it's quite simple if you know the, the principles and it's very rich. And so what is it that you have found rewarding as an astrologer and incorporating some of these medieval uh, techniques and understandings? What 
How has that enriched your practice? Well, being an astrologer is rewarding in itself. Now, if you include some practice, some medieval practice, or maybe sometimes uh, this, uh, the kind of astrology, the evolutionary astrology of Stephen Forrest, which I love too, but you get like the feeling when you have a, a customer you get our client, because it's not a customer, sorry. Um, when you have this, you sort of know which person is, with which person you can do one thing or the other. And to know many techniques helps, because you, you use what you have to. You, you have like an intuition after so many years of doing it, and you, and you get a satisfaction when you do it right. Absolutely. I remember uh, Jeffrey Cornelius saying that you want to expose yourself to as many techniques as possible, but then in the moment, you almost have to forget them and trust that inspiration or intuition, as you said, will lead you to the right techniques and you'll have the language to actually speak the truth for that client that's in front of you. That is exactly right. And when you get it right, when you help people find the way that they've lost or find the why things are happening to them, what is it they have to learn? Now, medieval astrology doesn't think like that. It, when Robert Zoller read my chart, he said, I'm going to tell you how you are. I'm not going to tell you what your attitude should be, what you should work with. I'm just going to tell you. But knowing yourself better helps you do everything better. So I do want to ask about, because you're quite an accomplished musician as well, so I'd love for you to talk about what that's like, and especially the connection you found between uh, being a classical pianist and astrology as well. Well, I think uh, they are like languages of the soul. I think when, you, when you're playing, when you're performing, you're speaking with something that goes further from words, beyond words. And astrology is the same thing. So I think they're like sisters, you know. And I know a lot of astrologers are musicians as well. There are quite of them here. And you, and you saw yesterday we had this music wrestle wonderful yeah, yesterday. So that's it. I think it's the soul that we're trying to express in one way or the other. Right. I've heard it said, I, I know... Um, there's, there was a great uh, sort of Sufi musician, Nusrat Fateh Ali Khan, and he talked about how and some of the Sufi philosophy around music, because I remember I was really into, like, you know, as part of spirituality, you learn about all the different uh, cultures out there. And I remember uh, reading something to the effect that really music, it, it sort of is closer to God, or that's one understanding that the Sufis have, that it's closer because it moves beyond the limitations of language, and that a lot of religions... They, they talk about how in the beginning there was the word, that the world began with sound. I think it's sound and geometry. You know, I think when you, when you can listen to the sound of the universe and you can, you can learn how to interpret the, the uh, geometry, I think that you've got the message there. Well, Martha, thank you so much. I really feel like I started at the top. I met you yesterday and I said, oh my God, this person is going to be great on camera. And yeah, absolutely. And uh, I just feel so privileged because uh, you are so articulate on the one hand, yes, but also very accomplished. And you um, seem to come across as having a great reverence and respect for what you do. And I think that is really when astrologers are at our best when we have that. So thank you so much for being here. Welcome. I was very glad to be with you. And everything I do in life, I enjoy so much that my life is really so fulfilling. You know, I feel so fortunate. And thank you for listening to me and what I have to say. Study astrology. It's the best thing that could ever happen to you. That's so awesome. Thank you so much for being you, here. Nadia. And thank you for being here to celebrate Martha and medieval astrology and music and all things that are wonderful and spiritual with me. Until we connect again, take care.